Hands. His ankle there, nice, nice kick. kick. He comes Jordan, Jordan back. come back with those hands again. Hello. Your boys are back again. We're here. In, in I feel like this is like the new combat chat podcast, like mm-hmm. post 200. Like, <laughs> like, this is the new era. The new era yeah. <laughs> I feel like we've... um. We like starting again. Yeah, well, yeah. We, you know, did that little reel and had a lot of good po- uh, like comments on there. Like, yeah, I love the podcast. Keep it up. Everything. Just like it's awesome, actually. Yeah, I got a lot of really nice messages about mm-hmm. the two hundred milestone, which yeah. is nice. I mean, it's always nice to be like when you get to like two hundred, and like a lot of the conversation was like, you know, it's not huge. It's it's a modest project. I think that's what I called it. it was a mm-hmm. modest project. Um, but then like when you put that out and people are coming back, like, oh, there actually are some people listening. It's, <laughs> it's reassuring. Yeah, it was awesome. Right. Um, what is it? Let me think. Oh, yeah, it's just, it was just there. Yeah, it's good, like, the outreach from there. Like, um, also got a fair few messages afterwards. It goes, oh, now I want to jump on. Can, can you get me oh, yeah. spots? I go, oh, okay. A few people come on. Um, also, maybe some sponsors as well. Yeah, that's nice. Interesting sponsors. <laughs> yeah, <let's see. laughs> but it should be fun. Uh, but like um, this week, uh, we have a guest on. Enough about us. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Talk enough. We had enough of us yeah. the last couple of weeks, anyway. Okay. So, um, so our, our guest is on. You might have seen her if you're on on, on the YouTube. But I'll give her a bit of an intro. So she's fighting at a Manasak gym in Thailand and internationally. While she's in Australia, she's fighting at a Marsing gym, MSP out there in the west um previously sponsored by santi and muay thai gym in thailand um lion fight world champion 50 kilos uh muay thai grand prix world champion 50 kilos with over 30 fights has a couple great wins of the zaza dung uh fanny ramos um so we have on the line at the moment is lisa Bradley. how are you hey i'm good thank you how are you both very very well looking forward to this one yeah, this would be a good chat. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for having me on and congratulations on the 200 uh, episodes as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, Lisa, look, so when someone comes onto the podcast for the first time, we just wanted the background just to begin with. So, like, uh, uh, how did you get into uh, Muay Thai? What was, what was the beginnings? Beings? Um, so, I originally started just for um, a little bit of exercise on a Sunday. Um, just once a week because you know like when you're about 18 21 you're sort of going out drinking and eating a lot more and I was gaining a bit of weight so I just started going on a, on a Sunday for um, exercise and uh, from about 18 to 21 I like dabbled in and out of my so I wasn't really really serious to be honest and then um, I stopped it for a good couple of years and then when I was about 27 I decided to go to Thailand on holiday um, just like work was getting like really intense so I thought I'll just get away and then I went to San Tai Muay Thai in Chiang Mai and I was literally there about 10 days, just uh, two weeks. I wasn't really planning on fighting or training really hard, but I ended up actually training really hard and fighting, you know how it is in Thailand. And then they offered me um, sponsorship. So this was like in the November time and I went home in the December and then I flew back out in January. Um, and then it just kind of kickstarted from there. I just went into like full time training and fighting and sponsorship and um yeah that's been since 2017 so yeah five years later i'm here <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a bit of a whirlwind journey um yeah so before you like i guess take up fighting like almost in a full-time job what were you doing beforehand uh for money oh um so i was a visual merchandiser so like just arranging clothes shops things like that and then i was a client account manager for um doctors and nurses like agency doctors and nurses so nothing really exciting or anything that I really wanted to do but I was just one of those people that I never really knew what I wanted to do if that makes sense I just dabbled in and out of things um and I've always liked Muay Thai but um I think like working up until 27 and knowing that I was in jobs that I didn't want to do uh when I actually got the opportunity to do something that I wanted to do I was like I just grabbed it with uh, both hands really and I think it was like a little bit of a midlife crisis at a young age <laughs> 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 it's probably the best time to have it. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> Get it out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> I guess you, you know you went from you know rearranging merchandise to really amazing people's faces. So can you kind of walk us through your first fight? Like, you know, the feelings, like the, the atmosphere, like in the yeah, the whole the whole experience. Um, my first fight. So um but something about me is that like, I never had any amateur fights and I never had any like, um, like, um, cause I started quite late, like 18, 21. I never had any like sort of, um, junior fights, amateur fights. Mm-hmm. So I kind of just got thrown in the deep end. 
um and I just had my first uh like in the UK we called it B class so it would be like kicks and knees to the head but no no elbows yep. um and uh I just I think I remember not knowing anything if that makes sense like we had to check weight but I remember leading up to the fight I never really yeah. checked my weight uh, I never really like watched what I ate or anything like that but miraculously I've and weighed in under and everything like that um and just walking up I remember walking to the ring and the girl was fighting was um really fit and I just remember seeing the six pack between the ring <laughs> like the ropes <laughs> just a six pack and I was thinking oh shit what am I doing and then literally by the time like you're in the ring and everything goes like the bell goes sort of you just like you don't feel anything and I remember not thinking oh shit anymore because it was kind of too late I was in there um and then I fought and during the fight I remember like a few things really hurting but I feel like the adrenaline took over if that makes sense so I don't really remember too much about it apart from that six pack that really imprinted in my head (laughs) (laughs) um but like this um after the fight I just remember like this this like so 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 happy I was so happy and so excited because within I knew I just had to do it again um and it was such a long time ago because obviously my first fight was at like 18 um I don't remember everything about it if that makes sense but those I just remember being so happy and excited with I knew I was going to keep doing it um yeah so not too much about the first fight (laughs) and and you mentioned that so that being your first fight your first b-class fight and a few years later you went over to Thailand and you know really caught the bug and ended up staying for a long time were you sort of active like how many fights had you racked up before you decided to make the move to Thailand oh I think I'd only had about six yeah. um and with me it was never like the the six fights and with the training obviously you know like obviously um if you're not training fighting full-time in Thailand obviously we're working and we're training yeah. so my training was never consistent and my fights were never consistent so I only had six fights from 18 to 27 Yep. So it's not really, and they wasn't like two in a year. They were like really spaced out. Um, so yeah, I'd only had six. And I can't remember like how many I'd won or lost. But do you know what I did? Like now I've fought a lot. I didn't realize how much of a disadvantage I was um, at when I was taking these fights. So like, for example, um, the gym I was at was really small in the UK. Um, so we'd want to take fights, but they were all up north and maybe about three, four hour drive. So I remember one fight in particular, um, we couldn't get up for the, the day before weigh-in. So the girl weighed in the day before, and then I rocked up to the fight and weighed in there and then, and then fought. And that happened on two occasions. But at the time, I just thought that was normal. I just thought, yeah, yeah you do that sort of thing. But now I'm more experienced. I'm like, no, I would say, like, you pay for my travel the day before, or, yeah, yeah she needs to weigh in. Like, there was no, like, video weigh-ins or anything like that um so yeah so I I did like perform okay but um yeah it was just very inconsistent training um obviously fights like that where they weren't really fair but you know like I just wanted to fight then and I think I was so naive to everything I wasn't really scared to to just rock up and fight yeah not uh not at a place to overthink it just looking at (laughs) yeah it was just like you know when it's for fun so you don't overthink you're not really worried yeah. about anything so yeah so there were some good memories when I think about it now <laughs> and at that stage of course now fighting at, a, at an elite like a world-class level at that stage in your career were you looking to build towards where you are now or were you just kind of like doing it for a bit of fun and and it all kind of came together Sort of, as you got to Thailand um, yeah I definitely never thought I'd be where I am now um just back then it was literally for a hobby on the side like a bit of fun yeah. um I never thought I'd be doing it full-time I'd never even really like dreamed about doing it full-time it just never really crossed my mind but I think that was just more maybe um because I was from like quite a small area we'd never seen mm-hmm. anyone do that so I didn't think it was possible yeah um maybe um so when I did obviously get the opportunity to do it I was kind of like oh fuck it what 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 can I lose really um but it sounds really like this sounds a bit like stupid but I do know that when I was a bit younger like I wasn't I just felt like I wasn't gonna have like a not a normal life I don't mean it like that but I don't I didn't think I was gonna follow suit about like settling down getting a house having kids like I'm I'm gonna do that hopefully but I just knew that wasn't gonna be soon anytime soon I always knew that but I didn't know what I was going to be doing that so that I wouldn't be doing that 
yeah, thought you'd do something like a little bit less conventional, possibly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So moving from those kind of like, I, I guess, sort of sporadic fights at that kind of B-class uh-huh. level over in the UK and then getting to Thailand, as you say, more so for a holiday than anything uh-huh. and then really taking it up. What was the experience like when you started to fight within Thailand? Because, of course, there's no A, B, C class yeah. over there. It's, it's uh, yeah, talk talk about the process of, yeah, kind of adopting the the true, true Thailand. Uh, oh, that was emotional and painful. <laughs> um, I think my first three fights, I thought, because um, originally I'm uh, orthodox, right, Garden? So my first three fights, I fought three southpaws. Um, and I've never been kicked like that in my life. I just remember the first, I'd say, five fights, six fights in Thailand, I got absolutely battered. I just got destroyed. Um, and I had, like, really uh, really painful um, right shin, um, you know, like, forearm where I wasn't obviously blocking their kicks. Um and it was like, it was a massive shot because obviously I thought like, oh, I fought before I can do it mm. here sort of thing. But you just don't, you don't realize the step up if, um, mm. if that makes sense. So um, the first couple of months, like uh, just training, like consistent um, was like tiring, but like just fighting and getting like, just never being good enough. I definitely started to think like, shit, this is a bad idea. Like, what was <laughs> I thinking? <laughs> um, and so um, I was really amazed that like, just how strong these girls were and just with their timing like I couldn't touch them um so like I think like the first six months my confidence just like just went down so much and I was thinking like oh do I keep going like there was like you know when you're like should I give up do I keep Mm -hmm. going but also I'm glad I I kept pushing um but yeah that was a massive eye-opener into the Muay Thai world (laughs) massive so if I could just get you to backtrack for a second you were originally orthodox yeah, so I'm right-handed and I've just always fought and trained as um, orthodox, but because um, <laughs> I was losing so much, obviously when I first got to Thailand and I just wasn't picking up very well, they were like, we're just going to start you again. So um, Manasag has been with me since. Uh, so my, my first sort of like six fights in Thailand were like with different trainers. And then mm-hmm. when I was like losing so much, Manasag was like, okay, I'll take a run, but only if I can switch her to um southport and just start fresh like get rid of all the the bad habits um and that's when yeah yeah Yeah, i wouldn't pick that like i mean of course you've been in southport for a while now but it it Mm. looks pretty natural yeah i'm glad because when i go back to orthodox i just can't do it i can't throw like a one-two punch i can't step like this completely alien to me now um but yeah so like i think that was learning the basics again and just going Mm like from scratch really helped to to get me where I am now but like most I think like most people that do fight uh southpaw and orthodox they can switch between both like especially some of like the elite ties whereas yeah I can't (laughs) yeah that's really interesting and and was there uh, as like you mentioned it was a big part of just kind of stripping everything back and and starting Mm -hmm. again from the fundamentals but was there a particular reason uh, he preferred you in southpaw um well like I remember I'd lost a lot and I wasn't, I wasn't getting any better. Um, I just wasn't improving in the fights. I I couldn't touch anybody with my right kick. Like it was just terrible. But um, I think my, when I did touch them with my kick, um, they were blocking it. So my right shin was pretty, was pretty like, I'm going to say fuck, sorry. Um, So I couldn't even knee on it. I couldn't block, I couldn't kick. So they were like, well, she can't do anything on the right side. Let's try switch it to Southport anyway um, and go from there. But uh, yeah, I think it was because of my shin, but, I just wasn't getting any better at all. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so you said you, you just, you linked up with Manus like that, but how, how did that actually come about then when like, he took you on and then like basically changed the whole style? Yeah. So like um, at Santai, when you're sponsored fight, you get put with one trainer and that trainer looks after you and develops you and gets you ready for the fights. Yeah. Um, previous to going with Manus, like, I'd been with like two trainers um, and they'd obviously done their best to work with me but I just didn't get better so um Manasat was like okay um give uh, I'll take Lisa on if I can put her um only if I can put her to left and just just start over with her so that was his like demand before he'd even um started training with me and then so yeah then I, um, I linked up with Manasat and then um with him I just started I got a lot I got 
quite good in that stance and I started winning more fights and my confidence started to grow so um the Santa managers just kept me with him they already like changed you with a trainer if you think that if they think you're not gelling or obviously if you're not getting any better mm. um and that was for about that was about yeah two years um and then I got injured and, and had to stop for a, about a year and a half um but prior to that I was I was fighting every month with him I think with Manus up prior to uh, COVID and um, an injury that I had, I'd only lost to two people. Um, I'd, I'd won like every fight with him. So that was, that. Uh, I think that pushed me to carry on as well. And so uh, it, I also noticed, like you said, like you were having really sounds quite tough matches from the very mm-hmm. beginning when you're in Thailand. So, yeah. I mean, was it a bit of a, throwing you to the wolves kind of situation because you do often see people go over to thailand and you know kind of their first few fights are you know sort yeah. of building fights and stuff like that but so you, you started fighting high level opposition right away yeah so like my second fight was um i can't remember the the gym name but it was by a lady called tisha and that was for a wm uh, wmc belt um and i just wasn't wasn't ready for it but you know sometimes you get not really thrown to the wolves but you know like the some promoters want Thai people to win or what uh like an easy fight if that makes sense and I, re- I actually remember um you know when you get the paper and you have to write down your record I wrote down my record of like it was like six or seven fights and the Thai people actually changed it so it was higher because obviously like they had this champion fighting yeah. me with like six fights and then she'd had how many fights and they didn't want to look like it was an easy matchup but it was yeah. um the one thing about um Sam Thai Muay Thai is that they will never just let you fight um someone who's like not not very good or is a kid or you know like overweight sort of thing like they do try and push for good fights because they want you to get better they don't just want you to win fights they want you to be good but yeah so my first fight was for the WMC belt at 51 kilos against Tisha I lost that my second fight was against um Nong Benz um just fought like the likes of Wonder Girl or Supergirl, I'm not too sure, one of the sisters anyway. Um, she's Northern Champ. Um, then I fought um, Little Star, so I'm not going to be able to say her name right, but that, uh, you know the lady that's just fought um, Spring Seer? Bang down um, Yeah, so I fought her and I, I did beat her, but yeah, so she was only like my fourth, fifth fight. Um, yes, but it just kind of went like those fights were all my first fights and they really... um. It really no it didn't sh- shake me up but obviously like I just realized that I wasn't good enough to to be where I was at the time so so when you did get your first win in Thailand from there what what was that feeling like did it feel like it clicked together or did, did you go oh it's like yeah still got to keep building um I was really happy that I got a win I was like oh okay <laughs> <Nice. Like one. laughs> um, but when I watched the fight back it was just like I was still switching at that time I was still left like going from like southpaw to orthodox just like accidentally like you know just going back to bad habits when I looked at it, I was like oh my god that's bloody awful so like even though like I was happy I got the win I was more upset that I was performing like that so if anything it just pushed me to be like oh I don't want to get another win but I was like oh I want to fight better I want to look good is that why I'm fighting so for me like I prefer to have a good performance over a win or loss um so yeah so once I got that win but looked at the performance I was like okay I've got to get better if I'm going to keep winning (laughs) and you think like getting genuinely tested from the very beginning because I I think that's like a, a a very productive mentality when you're performance focused more so than obviously with like winning is the objective all the time right you wouldn't be there if you weren't there to win but if like like you really want to get to that next level it's it does become a bit more about how you perform yeah um do you think getting genuinely tested from the very beginning kind of helped you have a performance-based mentality because you're not worried about protecting a record Mm -hmm. or anything like that you're genuinely you know concerned with your the development of your style um if I'm being honest, I think it really knocked my confidence. And I think even now, like maybe four or five years later, I still struggle with um, confidence issues. If I'm good enough, if I'm not good enough. And um, at the time I was, I was definitely like, it didn't, I think like going into fights, I didn't think, oh, I've lost a couple of times. So it doesn't matter if I lose because of my record. Um, but I generally thought like, I, I just thought like for, for like for, to be like to have less pain and to fight good I knew I had to get better which which pushed me more to fight better people but 
um, fight good and not get hurt so much. Because obviously in Thailand, you're not getting paid that much as well. So like, I don't want to like fight for five rounds, get like 3,000 baht at the time, and then come out with like 10 stitches on my head. Like, I know obviously none, none of us in Muay Thai fight for the money, but okay, when you're fighting internationally and you get a bigger purse, yeah, you can risk getting cut because you don't need to go to work. Oh, like you can you can have time off where how do I say it like in Thailand like you get cut for 3,000 baht yeah and then you, can, you can't go back to training you can't fight the next month so you can't get your wage whereas here you can risk getting getting cut because you can get a bigger wage and you go back to work does, does that make sense yeah that, that makes sense. yeah um so yeah I think uh just trying to protect myself because I knew I had to fight again the next month and I wanted to fight good um that that pushed me to keep going i think more mm-hmm. and do you think that's an element of the kind of you know fight like the, the the real thailand kind of side of muay thai that people kind of overlook is that it is a job you know you have mm-hmm. to be thinking not just about this fight but about fighting as your source of income and and protecting your ability yeah. to continue getting in the ring um, I think like foreigners that have, that have been there for a long time, they get it. Like yeah. we know we've got a fight and that that wage we get, that's got to last us to our next fight. And obviously sometimes you can get a fight two weeks later if you're not hurt. Sometimes you might get a month later. Um, whereas foreigners that come for, it's like a Muay Thai holiday, I'd say. Yeah. So they come for two weeks or three weeks, they train as much and then they have this big fight at the end. They don't have to worry about it. So I yeah. think that gets overlooked. But I think more... Um, in the local stadiums, it's overlooked for the Thai people. So, like, for example, in Chiang Mai, you've got loads of local stadiums, like all over Thailand, and you get a lot of young Thai schoolgirls that um, are fighting every week because they're getting, like, a 1,000 baht instead of working in 7-Eleven for 300 baht a day. You know, they just go fight for 10 minutes and then they get a 1,000 baht done. Um, and I think it's overlooked by the for- foreigners and who are like, on the Muay Thai holiday that want to fight, which is yeah. obviously fair enough. Um, but they go to the stadium and they just see this opponent. They don't see the whole objective of that's a schoolgirl who's probably going to go to school next week and is yeah. probably going to fight the following week for a little bit of money and they're going to try and cut her. And, and not because it's um, they want to hurt her or anything like that, or maybe they do, but more because it's Muay Thai and you've been practicing elbows your entire life and you can do A class. But they, I think they don't realize that how it's going to affect them and why they're doing it compared to why we're doing it. So I think that's overlooked more than um, about like uh, the the foreign people that I like the foreign fighters that are there. Yep. So <clears throat> so this, uh, this with your experience, like starting off there, like you said, it was really knocked to, knock to your confidence, uh, mm. and you kind of got gone past a couple of those barriers from there. Do you have a couple of points that you, from your experience that you can give to other people that are in a similar situation as you are? So if they they got there. They're trying, they're trying to make it happen, but they're like, you know, just racking up the losses from yeah. that one. What, what, can, what kind of advice can you offer them? Um, I'd stay consistent. I would stay consistent, um, especially with the training, because I, it's, I feel like one day it just, it will click. It, it will happen, but you just have to keep going, keep going. Um, like there was so many times where I always think like, I always went to training, but there's so many times where I didn't want to fight um, and I'd cry because of my performance, just ridiculous things like that. Um, but I just realized the more I was turning up to training, the more it was happening. So like, if you think that, oh, I'm too tired to go to training, like obviously not over training, but um, I would say just keep going and training and keep learning. And, and sometimes like, even though I say keep training, I think sometimes it's good to have a rest day and just sit back because then when you do go back to training, you're more mentally um, with it. Because yeah. especially, especially people are in Thailand, you forget when you overtrain, you go to training and think, yeah, I've done my 300 knees or my 300 kicks, but you can't remember what the trainer just told you. Yeah. You're not going to get better. Whereas sometimes it's just about listening and learning uh, timing and where to do different things. But if you're too tired to listen, you're not going to remember it for the next day. You're not going to be switched on. So like, even though I feel a bit of a hypocrite saying, like, keep training, but also just be mindful when you are going to train, if you're listening and if you're really taking it, taking it in because something that I found with uh, Manasak like, even though like when my, we first started training um like he said to me you don't even have basic which was running longer distance push up pull ups I couldn't do any of it um, so that was like first getting like physically um prepared but after a while it was about teaching me when to throw the shots and my timing and things like that and I think anybody that is starting out and they are in Thailand that is something that I would really work on is like um 
not just going to the gym and bang, 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 but working on your timing, uh, figuring out when to throw shots and doing it with a partner. Um, just like footwork, moving around with your partner and footwork and things like that and checking distances. Because I, I noticed from self-experience and watching other people is when some people fight, like they're kicking air all the time because they're not stepping forward and the tires, their timing is amazing. And obviously um, foreigners as well. But just from that instance, if you are in Thailand like I was and you're starting out and it's just not clicking, that would be my, my advice to work on. And from spending that time in thailand after kind of starting off your career and your training in the uk was there anything that really stuck out that you felt like kind of back home could learn from thailand you know when you got that authentic look were you like yeah. i mean i guess for the first we like oh okay muay thai is really not what i thought it was like that's some people's experience when they first go over they're like oh well my trainer was teaching me at home was not yeah. Muay thai. Or was there anything that really stuck out that like oh we, we could do the things a little bit more like this back at home yeah um the first thing that stuck out me is like why are their shin bones like this like how can i get those <laughs> <laughs> what did I have back home? um i'm just trying to think really like i think um something that stuck out to me is why when and why i throw a shot without sounding ridiculous because you know back home we're taught like we're taught to punch uh well for me I was, I was taught to punch and knee and elbow and kick but in Thailand I was kind of taught when to use it yep. if that makes sense and um which to other people that might just be like obvious uh, but to me it, it wasn't <laughs> apparently which I can probably tell from my fights but yeah that was that was something that I was I was personally never taught when I first started out um but now looking back, like, I think if I was going to go back to UK and say I was going to teach, like, young people, it would be distancing and timing. and Because, mm -hmm. you know, like, it's sometimes I find that like, some fighters can be quite erratic, like, throwing, yeah. like, shots that, to me, just wouldn't make sense now from watching the Thai, Thai fighters. Like, you know, they would always set something up, whereas I yeah. find, like, fighting... Um, like more internationally it's not the same setup as a Thai person so um yeah so to me it would be when if I was to go back it I'd want to know when to throw shots and why to throw them if that, if that kind of makes sense yeah that makes sense I, I think sometimes like if you were to describe like a, a, a for a couple of reasons like a, a western style even just of teaching compared to a Thai style it's like the western style is almost like overexcited like yeah. you look at a class of people learning Muay Thai again a part of the like there's a commercial reason for it you know mm -hmm. you have to keep people interested so here's today's combo and bah, 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 bah. Yeah. whereas when you watch Thai's train it can be as simple as doing the same kick over and over again because it's what are mm -hmm. these slight angle differences what's this slight timing can I step a little bit more this way just yeah. refining a simple thing because yeah like it doesn't have to be you know that you don't have to make it more interesting or make it more mm -hmm. sellable. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. Like I was trying to, I was, couldn't find the words to explain it, but that's what I mean. Like it's just more simple things, like just teaching basic and simple things. And I totally understand. Like obviously, um, like Western, like we most of us like work and then we go train, so we don't have that much time to yeah. um, so obviously focus on the little things, but. Um, I would still, if I was to go back, I would find the time, even though just five or 10 minutes just to, to work on that before going into these combats, if they do want to have like a quick workout, you know, like yeah. sweat out, sort of like Muay Thai exercise in a way, isn't it? Yeah. And so if we kind of, uh, so racked up a lot of experience and kind of made the bulk of your, your career moments in Thailand, but mm -hmm. here you are in Australia. So, yeah. <laughs> how has um this come together? What's brought you to this part of the world? Yeah, that was uh it wasn't something uh I thought was gonna happen, not this year anyway. Um so I was training um obviously last year I was training at um well not last year, a couple of years ago I was at Sam Thai and obviously COVID came. Um mm. so I went home and then I came back to Thailand last year. Um I went back to train with, with Manasak, but he was in um Bangkok. Um and obviously yeah, um, the start of the year, there wasn't that much work going around because of COVID and Thailand was picking back up. And then he got an opportunity to to work here. 
Um, and then when he was on the phone to the trainer, they said that obviously like I've been with Manasak for a while now, so everybody kind of knew that I was training under him. They said, oh, does Lisa want to come with and fight here? So we're like, oh, okay. Um, and then it kind of like raveled on from like, there's a potential fight to in Australia to fighting for a WBC uh, title in Australia and then having a second fight in Australia. It kind of just like whirlwind on kind of thing. <laughs> Um, so that's that's how I got here. But to be honest, at the start of the year, because um, I came back to Thailand last year after about seven or eight months out and I had one fight and then my granddad passed. So I went home and then I came back. So I had like another three, four months out and then I came back the start of this year. And I just kind of thought I wanted to get into some consistent training in Thailand. Um, and that was all a bit hazy because I got COVID twice as well. So, um, wow. yeah, I got it. Literally, I flew into Thailand in December and we we're doing the you know it was like the test and go so you go to the hotel yeah. for one night and if you test negative you can leave well I tested positive typical I've got to rush to hospital I didn't need rushing to hospital but I had to quarantine in hospital for 10 days so then I came out and trained solo for two months had a couple of fights and then got COVID again um no, so no. like my my training was just up and down kind of thing and then uh I got over COVID and then um, got uh, got the fight with Kim here in Australia and then flew here. So, yeah, it's been like a crazy couple of months. Like, I just didn't think this was where I was going to be, to be honest, <laughs> at this point. And what was the experience like after spending so long fighting primarily in Thailand to mm -hmm. come fight? You know, Kim, did you, did you feel like it was really kind of stylistically different? How did the experience differ to what you've got used to over the last few years? Yeah. Um, so I flew in about a week and a half early. Um, the weather really hit me. Everything hurt here because, you know, you're so cold. I was like, where are these aches and pains come from? Um, and the training schedule really threw me. Because it's not the same, obviously, like in Thailand, I could train twice a day. Yeah. Um, have that routine here. It's just it's just once a day, like cause the uh, Martins um, and running. So the training really, really like threw me a little bit. Um, I psychologically was like oh my god am I training enough when I was probably training like the perfect amount but you know obviously because yeah. in training we do so much um and the food was a bit different but um I feel like the whole build up with like the like the tags and the posters and stuff so I was like that was all a bit like oh it's all a bit nerve-wracking because in Thailand I know they've got posters and stuff now but not it's not so um what's the word not not commercial I'm trying to think of the right word like you know, it's not that advertised. Yeah, it's not that advertised. So like, so yeah, so then um, I went to fight Jazzy Pass, so that, and then obviously the day I landed, that changed to Kim, uh, that got cancelled and changed to Kim. Um, and then the day before weigh-in, and then, because uh, in Thailand when you fight for a belt, it's the same day weigh-in, isn't it? So obviously yeah. the day before, and then all the lights, and like, you know, like the music. Yeah, it was all really exciting but no more, it made me more nervous to be honest yeah it made me yeah, a lot more, right. more more nervous um and obviously like you have like loads of viewers in Thailand as well like you get Thai people but I think I can understand some Thai but I wouldn't say I'm fluent so sometimes when people say anything I can't really understand them so it's easy to block out mm. <laughs> whereas here you can understand everything uh, and it makes it more nervous so yeah fighting internationally it, it definitely makes me a little bit more nervous because I think it's more um advertised compared to in thailand everything's more relaxed mm. so uh, going to the fight itself with kim townsend from there she's she recently won the world title before this fight as well um mm -hmm. when you got in there did was it pretty much what you expected from kim um did you research beforehand or did when you got in there uh, did you find anything about it like you go, oh this is hard to time this is a little bit different mm -hmm. than i'm used to um so I didn't really watch too many of uh Kim's fights before I didn't watch any of them actually I, I never really look at I don't really watch my opponents for me it makes me more nervous and I end up focusing more on what they're doing uh rather than what I'm doing yeah. if that makes sense um I knew she was going to be fit I thought like I'd heard before that she can go the five rounds so I thought like she wouldn't be fit but I was surprised at how strong she was yeah um especially because yeah so I thought like maybe my uh strongest sort of like technique would be my my clinch now when I went with Kim's and she was more stronger than me um that that was what I was more surprised about in the fight um not about like uh what level she was at but I just thought she was going to be fit and like running around like sort of like more femur for the five rounds not like a, a strong Moi Cal yeah. um 
so that that surprised me on the fight I, I wouldn't really say like the timing really put me off I knew she was going to kind of low kick um especially because I'm southpaw um I kind of get that a lot anyway so I always that's something I always work on um but yeah no the the timing didn't put me off but it was more how physically strong she was um I felt like with the fight as well I didn't really warm up until the later rounds I probably should have tried to get going more in the first round um and I suppose that's from uh, fighting in Thailand for so long um, yeah that's what I was gonna ask you if you felt yeah. like that was kind of yeah, used to the pacing two minute rounds as well for that fight yeah as- two minutes round uh, I think with the two minute round even though I fight two minutes in Thailand I have fought three minutes before but I feel like with the two minutes because you haven't got that much time you have to go 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 yeah. you don't get time to like stop and think about what shots you're gonna throw and I think that's something yeah. like uh, with Kim I couldn't even though like um like I I couldn't like stop and think about what to throw because I knew I only had yeah. two minutes and because I hadn't got like got going I think I got going really towards the end of the second round I knew I was already like oh I've only got three rounds left now I've got to really push it um so yeah that, I think that's something to bear in mind the more I fight uh, more international I need to just go from the first go from the first round yeah um, especially against a fighter like Kim right because she, yeah. she's quite high pace and and mm-hmm. a hard starter so if you're taking your time across the rounds like she'll steal the early ones yeah exactly yeah. and I feel like I did better in the later rounds than I did the earlier rounds I think I had a really crappy round too but the later rounds was better for me and I feel like I was more comfortable in the fifth round but obviously by the time I got to the fifth round the fight's over <laughs> yeah um, so it's obviously it's a learn learning experience um and you know what, like, I'm happy that when I fought for a WBC belt, it was against, like, Kim Townsend, the number one in, obviously, Australia. Um, she's beat so many people. So if I'm going to fight for such a prestigious belt, I want to fight against, like, the best, if that makes sense. So, yeah, obviously, sure. it was, um, it's never nice to lose. Like, it hit me, like, it would hit anybody hard to lose. But the way I look at it is I fought one of the best people and the better fighter won. And I'm obviously i'm okay with it like but i just got to, got to move on for got to move on from it um just get better from it and i, I thought it was an awesome fight mm. i you, you probably watched it again with the commentary yeah. i was really really yeah. really enjoying it we all were thank uh, you we're a big commentary team and and a lovely star and and also before the fight um your ramoy is quite spectacular like it's <laughs> really nice to watch i, I was you. interested to ask uh you know, was that taught to you? Did you always have the one runway? Did you learn it in pieces over the course of your time in Thailand? How, how did that come together? Yeah, um, definitely more in pieces. Like the first time I ever did go to Thailand on holiday, I stayed um, in Ayutthaya at Sit Phalang Gym and he's known for like a wide crew. So when I was there, I was, I'm really like painfully shy as well. And like I said, I'm not confident as it is. So he would make me do, he would teach me this wide career runway and he would make me do it, but I didn't have a choice. Um, and then that was only for, I was only visiting for about a week and a half and then I went home. But um, I kind of had it in my head that every time I fight, I had to do that anyway, because what he had told me. Um, but then when I went to Sandai and the more fights I watched, um, I was just inspired by different things from different fights that I then wanted to take and sort of like make into my own. Um, so, yeah, so I was taught one um, with Sipalang in Ayotia. But when I went to Sandai, I just kept watching loads of fights and then kind of took pieces from what I liked and put it into my own. Um, so it was kind of like your own sort of, you, you sort of piece it together yourself. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. Um, I mean, Mamas has taught me a few things as well, like a lot of the, the groundwork. So I think like the, the start of my uh, runway is from Sit Palang. And then um, I think like, you know, when you're on your knees kind of thing and you're about mm-hmm. like going forward and backwards, that's from all Mamas. And then the bits from like dancing around the ring is like from what I liked. <laughs> um, so it kind of like my journey is like all in one. If, if that makes sense but um I, I do you like know that. what that was something that I forgot like because I'd been training in the gym and obviously when I flew here I was only getting one session um a day in the gym I just totally forgot to practice my wife career so when I was coming out on the stage I was like oh shit I haven't practiced it and I was thinking like am I gonna be able to get down there on my knees <laughs> <laughs> well, there was enough high, good highlight videos of it all okay, yeah, got heaps of reposts that one. It was really nice. Yeah, I, I think I got was... more reposted for that than my actual fighting. 
<laughs> ah, it's all good. Yeah. So, um, so now, uh, oh, look at my yep, that's fine. Uh, so now you're south for the second fight in Australia uh, on mm-hmm. Simon Sydney uh, against Spring Seal, which is a awesome, awesome fight. Match, yeah. Everyone, I'm, mm-hmm. I think a lot of people are looking forward to this fight. Mm-hmm. Um, for yourself, like coming into this uh, second final straight, have you put any expectations this time around? Like, you know, what you want to do, or like, you know, or you've been training Manasac, anything mm-hmm. in particular that you that you want to like basically have, I guess, your last final straight to yeah. show everyone what you're about? Um, I've actually got no expectations for this fight, just purely because um I wasn't sure if I was gonna get a fight before I went home. Um, I only got confirmed a couple of days ago. Um, and it's at uh, 53 kilos um i've never fought 53 kilos in thailand i fight at 50 kilos um that was my thought when i first saw the yeah made. Is that, um, I was like, does that make sense like <laughs> yeah it's, it's really heavy for me um even with kim i fought 50.8 and that's not cutting weight so i mm. feel like i don't really have too much expectation on me because i know the weight's so big for me um i think they'll be quite um it's, it's a disadvantage for me anyway but you know like how i said i really want to improve with my fighting and stay consistent for me like the main cause for taking the fight was I did want to fight here one more time and I'm just worried once I go home I'm, I don't know when my next fight will be yeah. and my main goal is to be consistent and improve from last time so um after the fight with Kim I didn't uh train too much and then there was word that oh I might get I might get fights so I started picking up training a little bit then I got the flu but then the fight got confirmed so got a good couple of weeks to really get going but I feel like I've got, I haven't put too much stress on myself because I know how big of the weight it is. That's the the main thing for me. But I just think like I like fighting, I love fighting, so I might as well just go for it. Um, really. For sure. And and you mentioned watching your opponents isn't really a thing, but are, are you familiar with Spring? I've heard her name. Um, I've seen a couple of her videos, just like you know, on Instagram when you're scrolling through. Yeah. Um, I haven't really um looked at any of her fights but i know she's fought some i think she's put uh fought some brooke marina like she's fought like big names um yeah. kind of thing so i know it's not gonna be an easy fight not just because of the weight but because she's obviously got experience she's got um from what i've seen personally on instagram um like a really nice style as well so yeah it's been i think it'd be a hard fight for like all of it I like for her style as well um yeah. I think she can pretty much do everything if that makes sense it's not like she's just got one particular thing she's good at I think she can adapt well to to everything too um yeah she's um yeah she's real all-around style um and, and like kicks are really nice so yeah a lot of fun mm. yeah. so w- once you kind of finish this fight go back to thailand whatever is, is there any like uh <clears throat> people in mind that you're looking at goes like i think this will be a really good next fight for me or like in the in the very near future um well i feel like uh um maybe a, a rematch with kim would be cool mm. um i think like our fight was um even though she won like i don't I, I think it was quite a close fight. Um, she definitely took the win, but um, it was a close fight. So I'd like to fight her again. I think that would be exciting. Um, That'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, obviously, like depending on how the fight goes with spring, like who knows? Like I'm always up for like rematches anyway, um, win or lose. Um, just trying to think. In Th- in Thailand, maybe um, Adida, so little stars, uh, little sister, Adida. Yep. She's my weight, 50, uh, 51, 52. Um, Oh, there's, do you know what? There's so many female fighters now. I kind of feel like there's not even like one person I'd really be like, I want to fight that person because I feel like there's just so many that you could fight now. Mm. Um, There's so many more uh, female foreign fighters in in Thailand as well. Um, So yeah, who knows? And just, um, yeah, there's there's not really like one person. Like obviously the the rematch that I said with Kim, um, maybe Adida, um, yeah, I, I kind of just, to be honest, I've never really turned a fight down because I really believe, like, if you love fighting, you will just fight. Um, so, yeah, but they're, they're the only couple of names that I can really think of right now. Yeah. And I'm uh, interested as well to get your take because, of course, you mentioned there's so many female fighters mm-hmm. in Thailand and, and abroad now. It's um, uh, like a scene that's developed really, really well. Mm-hmm. Um, within kind of that... Um, with the competition that you have, there's also kind of a number of routes that you can go. Like a lot of people sort of aim right now is going the one championship kind of mm. way. And then 
in support of that, you've got kind of like that entertainment sort of scene of Thailand, the more hardcore, the super champ, yeah. and then the more traditional stadium style. Mm. What's kind of your preference moving forward? Like, I, I, do you like the sort of three round thing? Would you like to go one championship or, mm. or do you prefer the stadium style? Yeah. Um, I love the, I prefer five rounders. Yeah. I, I definitely prefer five rounds. Um, I kind of feel like if I was to carry on just fighting in the local stadiums, I feel like then I haven't really progressed. Yeah. Um, so it's not that I would never not fight in a local stadium because I, I would, I, I love the festival fights. I think they're fun. Um, but for me, if I was just to stay at that level, I don't think I'd be really progressing so much. Um, and obviously as well, because I only do Muay Thai, the money's not, not great there. Um, with Super Champ and Muay Hardcore, um, the three rounds of three minutes of pushing forward. Um, at the moment, I don't think suits me so much. So it's something that if I do fight, I really have to work on and adapt to if I, if I want to win and be successful, but the money's better there. Yep. And um, I'd love to fight on one championship, but realistically, I, I know I'm not quite, I'm not quite ready for that. Um, and if I am going to go on, ever get the opportunity to go on such a big platform like that, um, I wouldn't want to show myself up <laughs> so I'd want to I'd want to be I want to be ready and make sure the fight that they offer me is um or if I was ever offered a fight in future um is a fair fight if, if that makes sense yeah. um so yeah so definitely the five rounders are my favorite um I feel like I need I need to keep moving on from the local stadiums um and I'll always take like uh, the super champ um and and lumpini now as well that's three rounds but i, I just know i have to be more adapt to, adaptable um to that style to, to win um you can't really get away with just going backwards all the time or you know um yeah, yeah and then uh I think it's like, yeah, it seems to be um, this new era of Muay Thai, this entertainment kind of Muay Thai, you know, like, you know, fair text promotion coming through. Did you mm -hmm. ever think about yourself? Like, you know, oh, I might have to transition to doing the small glove stuff at some point. Uh, it's definitely on the cards. Um, I feel like for me, though, if I'm going to transition to the small gloves, the money has to be, um, has to be good sort of thing. Um, Cause obviously like we, we put, I know I keep saying about the money. I don't do it for the money, but obviously we are putting, our body on the line constantly every time anybody that fights with our body on the line so obviously there's more risk going into those smaller gloves um i think for me as well whereas before when i was fighting in thailand before covid it was a different generation um and now i thought and covid's came about i do think the muay thai scene has flipped that it's changed um so yeah so fighting in the gloves i'd have to really change from my style but from before um if I want to keep the brain cells that I've got. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I haven't, um, I haven't said yes to, well, I haven't, um, I've only fought a super champ once anyway. Um, I haven't been asked to, or even asked to fight a boy hardcore. I'd always make sure that I'm really ready if I was going to do that. Cause it's just, I think it's a bit more risky. Yeah. As a spectator, what's your take on the, the little gloves, Muay Thai? Um, I, I, I like watching it, but it becomes more punching style and I, I for me I love watching Muay Thai I love watching uh the Muay Femurs yeah. and probably because I'm not I just can't get over how their timing like everything's perfect for like perfect for me when I watch them so I like watching the Muay Femur sort of style and the kicks yeah. and Muay Cow obviously when you go to the smaller gloves it's more punching and uh fast in and out sort of moving out the way so I enjoy it but um it's just a different fight altogether really it's a different style yeah Mm. Um, I'll take this opportunity to uh, ask you one of the questions I was sending on the Instagram. Mm. So this is from Pinky, from Pinky Muay Thai. Hi, hey. Pinky. Hey. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so just a generic question, guys. Like, you know, um, what, Lisa, what is one of your, uh, like, favorite fights that you had or a fighter that you fought against? Um, so mine was, like, a whole day. Um, so I think it was back in, oh, I've got two. Can I do two? You can um, well out that. <laughs> okay, so mine was on Muay Thai Day when I fought Saza Sori. Oh, actually, that fight I took heavy. So I was only 51 kilos, and they put me against Saza Sori at 53. Um, mm. And I fought her. I'm pretty sure I had a concussion for like a week because um, she elbowed me a lot. 
Um, but I won that fight and it was just a fight that I never thought I was even going to do or win, let alone win on Muay Thai Day. So I really enjoyed that. I was happy I came away uh, with the win. Um, I felt like I really had improved and shown what I'd been working on for so long. So, you know, as before I mentioned, like just keep for anybody that was struggling and not feeling like they were winning or getting anywhere. That to me just showed the progress I'd made and all the hard work that I was doing had paid off because like going from getting like battered to then a year later winning against Azazori was just like quite massive for me um and then I think it was the following month I fought in an eight women tournament in Ayotia so that was three fights in one day um and I got all the way to the final so I had like one fight if it was three rounds for two minutes I won that then the second fight was against a uh, funny Pelumpi from Greece um she's a bit of a veteran in thailand i beat her and then i went on to uh the final against tana chinook um she's like i don't know i'm not even exaggerating here it probably is gonna sound like i'm but she's like 10 times world champion um oh, yeah, she's we very had, very well accomplished. Yeah, <laughs> yes i like we had a very very close uh final and i became runner-up but i literally i just loved that day because again i was like had such a bad year and then going from like Sazori to fighting three fights in one day and getting to the final I think I got um 50,000 baht as well for that for that festival um and it was a day I was just like amazing um for me so even though I didn't even win the tournament I just loved it <laughs> um so um yes yeah, so they're my two favorite fights oh shit no there's actually one more these are probably my three highlights sorry one more um so I fought in a local stadium yeah, on a Sunday and then on the Monday I got a call, a last minute call to see if I wanted to fight in the French Alps on Saturday, like the same week, um, against Fanny Ramos. I think she's like if my champion and um, WMC or European, yeah. something like that anyway, um, for the Lion Fight World title. So I was like, I just fought the day before and I was like, okay, yeah, like let's see if they take it because someone had pulled out basically. Um, and then so that was the Monday and then on the Tuesday they're like yeah you're flying to France tomorrow so I flew to France from Thailand on the Wednesday by myself um, I stayed there till Thursday and then uh, Monday I couldn't come with me because obviously like the visa it wouldn't have been done in time so then um, the Santa owners flew out on Friday I checked away and I fought on Saturday and the crazy thing was I just thought I was fighting for a line fight for our title but it was actually for the Muay Thai Grand Prix as well um, I fought and won both world titles and that was literally on like not even a week's notice after just fighting the week before um, and I was by myself so that was that was crazy and it was really weird because when I got in the ring like obviously I thought it was gonna be like five rounds of two minutes or five rounds of three minutes but when I got in they were like gets four rounds I was like what the fuck I was like oh right <laughs> we're doing it anyway because I kind of had no expectation I didn't ever think I was gonna win because um my legs were still a bit busted up from the week before and I didn't even know I'd be fighting for two world titles and I was by myself so I know I had obviously like my managers but from like the Wednesday through to the Friday I was alone um made way and then yeah thought so and then I flew home on the Sunday um and they overfilled the plane so I got moved into first class so it was just like it was crazy <laughs> <laughs> but yeah um I thought they're like they're my top three fights I think yeah Oh, nice. That was awesome. So it came out like the champ champ afterwards. <laughs> yeah, I was literally. But then a month later, I tore my ACL. So, you know, it was kind of a <laughs> no. take the good with the bad, I guess. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I, I did your ACL again. before. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> cool. So anything else? Well, I'm interested to, to hear you take, of course, I uh, have been training uh, at MSP uh, mm -hmm. here in Sydney. It, from... I guess I'm always interested to hear after spending all that time in Thailand and, and now kind of training alongside people who are doing it in that more Western way, they work through the day and come in and train. Like what's kind of that done for your, I guess, perspective? Do you feel you've kind of made any changes um, since training over here? Yeah. Um, well, I did actually speak to a couple of the guys in the gym about this because I don't know how people do it honestly like I don't know how they can work all day and then come to the gym and train as hard as they do it makes me feel so lazy um because obviously like right now even if I did want to work I can't because of like uh, my visa anyway but I'm just like sitting about all day I mean I study online but I'm just like kind of sitting about and then I go to the gym and they're tra training just as hard as me but I've, you know some of them are like I think you call it tradies like traders is that yeah. right yeah, yeah. Exactly. And, I'm like, <laughs> yeah and I'm just like I'm really like 
um, impressed by it, but it did make me, not make me realize, because no, that's that's silly, but you know, like, obviously in Thailand, uh, you train really hard and you train a lot for a fight, but and you think you have to do that to to fight. But it did make me realize, like, if I did ever have to go home, like, I could still pursue a fight career if I wanted and actually have a job because I always just thought, like, no, I have to train full time for a fight. But here, it's made me realize watching everybody else and back home as well, like, I could still fight and work. Like, it it is it is possible um, to have that uh, balance. If yeah. that makes sense, because I think before I really struggled with, I can't work and move forward in my life because I have to fight. But you can do both. Mm. That's um, a good perspective yeah, to kind of pick up. Is. Definitely. Mm. Did, did you ever think uh, uh, for about like what what's going to be after fighting for yourself? Like when the career's done, hang them up. You- yeah. <clears throat> do you know what? It scares me. It really does scare me to think if I didn't have fighting on Muay Thai, like what am I going to do? Because I kind of felt like before I did have Muay Thai I felt so lost like I never knew what I wanted to do and then I got Muay Thai and it kind of like it's it's scary how much it does give you and I just think like if I take that away who am I like and I know that sounds ridiculous but I do feel like if I don't have fighting I feel like I would have to find like another hobby and like I don't know if it would be another hobby but like I would have to um dig deep because it scares me like what I would be like I think I'd be really sad um this sounds ridiculous but you know like fighting can really change people's lives like people that struggle with like mental health or weight issues just everything like that it can give you so much like if I don't fight I don't know what I would I'd do so yeah to me the thought scares me and I try not to think about it at all uh but at the same time I have thought about it recently and I've started studying online just like a PT course mm-hmm. um which makes me like think oh my god I've spent so much time like exercising of like uh, focusing on Muay Thai like I have no brain cells because studying is I just can't do it like I'm <laughs> like on there for a paragraph and then my attention span's gone <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it'd be interesting like yeah did yeah did you ever think about like yeah going back to UK like running your own gym or teaching at least because like the UK mm. s- s- scene is very strong mm. like but we talked about it it's a different type of style though definitely from there yeah um I thought about it and a lot of people say to me like when you come back like why don't you do um PTs why don't you teach and again I think this goes back to my own confidence issues like I personally um oh especially right now maybe I feel different in the future I don't feel like I've it's not that I haven't got the ability and it's just me not being self-confident um I just don't feel like I have the um the key not the keys but I don't know if I could give someone what they need if that makes sense like I don't know if I'm good enough to teach yeah uh, I don't know if I'm good enough to teach and in the same breath like I'm like well I've seen some people teach and I know I definitely wouldn't do that I would do this but yeah. I don't know how much this is gonna sound terrible but I don't know how oh how do I say this that sound like an idiot but um I don't feel like female teachers are taken serious like taken as seriously as male ones um which is sounds a little bit I've never tried to do it but I but I personally from what I see I don't know how much how many people would take me serious and like if I want to teach I would like to teach a fighter I'd want to teach the fighting style of Muay Thai I don't know if yeah. I could just teach Muay Thai exercise maybe I could do very well in that uh, going home and teaching like Muay Thai exercise for people that want to lose weight or you know just exercise but for me I want to want to teach a fighter I want to make fighters um that's not yeah. where the question is right it's like yeah. uh, I'm definitely the same when it comes to teaching that like I, I love Muay Thai mm-hmm. I don't necessarily love exercise like my passion is not like helping people just yeah. break their sweat it's a big part of Muay Thai just kind of inherently mm-hmm. but like I, you want to teach kind of the tactics and strategy and yeah exactly. make Muay Thai what it is mm-hmm. yeah but like it because yeah, so I feel like if they... I know you keep going you, you, you. oh um I was gonna say as well because like I feel like for me if like they wanted to come exercise or something and they wanted like a combination or a kick like I would know I would be like stop them and be like okay this is how you kick and I would yeah. make them do that kick until they get it and they're probably thinking like I want to like exercise the whole part of my body sort of thing I want to yeah. sweat out and I'm just I probably freezing where I'm like nope we're going over that kick again sort of thing so I think that's where I'd probably like struggle yeah. um in that in that sense yeah, but like, I think you, I think you make a good coach there, because like you know, you, like if you talk about like you know, 
people not take it seriously, you've got the resume to prove it. Mm. And like in mm. like with any kind of good coach as well, you, as long as you've got the passion, it doesn't matter. You know, yeah. you've got the passion to teach, then like you'll mm. be successful no, no matter mm. what. Oh, thank you. I will like, it's really funny because like I say all this and I'm doing this like PT course online and I'm thinking like I'm halfway through and I'm thinking, is this really what I want to do? Like why is I if I don't want to teach Muay Thai, why am I going to try and teach someone to exercise? And I'm like, <laughs> should have probably thought about this before I started it. <laughs> <laughs> but but speaking of which, um, you're going to be involved in some seminars soon. Oh yes, so um, I'm down next weekend in Melbourne. It is. Is it south of Sydney? Down? Yeah. 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 So I'm down in Melbourne at oh, Super Fight Gym um, next Saturday. Yeah, that'll be cool. Yeah. So um, I'm excited, but I'm actually really nervous. I've only done one before um, in the Isle of Man, like near, near uh, the UK. So, um, but um, I met Don and a group of his fighters in Chiang Mai before. So that's how like we know each other. Yeah. Um, got me down. Yeah, so if you're in Melbourne and you're listening, get over to Superfight. <laughs> Go yeah. see uh, Lisa and, and Manasak for a seminar. That'll be awesome. Yeah, um, the Superfight are a, a great bunch of guys. Mm. We love yeah. like John. He's dangerous, but he's good value. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be scared to go down. <laughs> don't, don't let him pull you into the pub. You know? <laughs> <laughs> if, if I wasn't fighting, then I'd happily go. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> All right, awesome so um i think that comes to a time look we really appreciate you coming on it was a great mm. chat <laughs> yeah no, thank you for having me i'm sorry if i rambled a bit <laughs> that's we, we love rambling and we're really really looking forward to um watching you fight again in a couple of weeks um glad thank we're gonna you. be there and glad you got another one on the books while you were while yeah. you were in australia definitely yeah so um yeah, I'll be flying home literally like two days after. Uh, I just need to like change my flight. But um, yeah, I think, but no, thank you for having me on anyway. I appreciate mm-hmm. it. And then hopefully I can catch up with you both at the flights. Oh, definitely. Um, so is, like, for now, <clears throat> do you want to thank any sponsors or like you know, let anyone know what's your social media if they, um, they're going to go for you? Um, no, I don't really want to give my social media because it makes me really nervous. And the more <laughs> stuff I put on social media, the more like stuff people are horrible to me in the comments. So now I'm, I don't even want anything to do with it. <laughs> um, <I hate> but, <laughs> yeah, honestly, like when my last reel, I just got so much abuse. I'm literally was like, maybe I should just quit really? Instagram. Yeah, it, but it was just it was just really weird stuff like uh yeah i'll let uh, you know i'll send it to you guys and um, you can have a look at the comments oh, okay. um yeah. but yeah i got like i got like three million views which was like you'd think i'd be really happy about hmm. but from like the comments i was like nope definitely not putting any more videos up anytime soon <laughs> yeah, people are awful <laughs> yeah. um but no i just um i just want to thank like uh or my friends and family obviously for supporting me for you guys having me on and for everyone that's in australia and msp muay thai um um and obviously the fighters and everybody that trains there for making me feel so like welcome here um that's something that i really admit like as soon as like i touched down in australia i got so much like support um from australian friends and from people that i'd never met before i felt really like instantly welcome so yeah thank you um to everyone uh for the messages and things like that i know i'm terrible with getting back in messages on instagram um and then also in fight style for um they sponsor me and manasak as well nice awesome all right guys thanks for listening in again from there you know we're the finest on instagram um we're also on spotify obviously brain review us we're on youtube brain review us subscribe mm-hmm. and um we'll catch you next time see ya peace